start. Hi everybody, I'm Hillary. And I'm Josh. This is the Wander Lounge. This is our bus home that we've been living in for the past year, building it out. So we've gotten a lot of questions over the last couple of years about our bus journey. And I thought we'd go ahead and make a video and talk about some of the things that people uh, ask us all the time. So the first thing people ask us is why did we decide to do a school bus in the first place? And I think a big part of it is we both really enjoyed traveling. We're both really independent folks and... I don't like being tied down. I don't like being in big cities. Too much commotion. I like being out in nature and you know, not being able to see your neighbors is a really nice thing. Once you've experienced it, I could never go back to living in the city again. Yeah, and when we first got together, I was working a full-time corporate job and dealing with traffic, driving into work every day, and the kind of soul-sucking environment that you end up in in corporate America. And we decided to make a big move across the country, and that wasn't enough for us. It was just a couple years later, we decided that we wanted to do the nomad kind of lifestyle. And we started off with a sailboat, and actually Hilly took uh, a lot of courses on- got my American Sailing Association certifications. Right, she's got several certifications. We owned a sailboat for a while, and after just the amount of effort that went into maintaining it. And, and being in the heat in Florida, it's absolutely awful. You can really only spend an hour out there on the boat. I mean, the water's 90 degrees, plus it's 90 degrees, plus 100% humidity. It's, it's a death trap, basically. It's just so hot in there. We had a lot of things where, like if you wanted to be able to still work, you needed to live in a marina. And if you're living in a marina, then that's really not any better than living in an apartment, in my mind. Yeah, you're even closer to your neighbors. And there's, you could leave, but when you leave, you've really left. And you disconnect from everything, including your ability to work. We had some big plans on being able to travel, you know, into the Virgin Islands, through the Caribbean, maybe even a big trip into Europe. And just the amount of time it takes to go places on a sailboat really kind of ruled that out. I can't disconnect from yeah. that long. But the free sailboat fuel sure was nice if you're okay with going 15 miles an hour everywhere yeah. you go at best. So we looked into alternatives to that. We looked at box trucks. We vans. looked at vans. We looked at class A RVs. And we looked at school buses, and after seeing what was out there in our price range and our skill level, we settled school on a bus. school bus. This is our second one, so clearly we made the right choice. You know, our first school bus we built out really quickly, about 45 days, to get a basic camper-type setup with it. And it didn't have all of the functionality that you would probably want in something you're living in full-time, yeah. but we made it work for... Uh, over a year and did um, a lap around the United States in it. How big was it from behind the driver's seat to the back in our... Well, the bus itself is 24 feet nose to tail and inside you have about 14 feet behind the one passenger seat that we left in. Yeah, we lived over a year in 14 feet of living space. We Clearly, we love each other. <laughs> and we made that space work as best as we could. We had a fridge. We had a fridge, we had a toilet, we had a futon, so we had a bed and Sorry, a sofa. Our cats are jumping around in the bus right now. We had our cat, and we had plenty of storage for clothing and things like that. And overall, it wasn't bad, but we were missing a few features that we'll talk about later on in the questions here. Uh, but overall, the bus really seemed to be the right choice for us. I liked that buses were built with safety as their primary feature of them they yeah, actually to protect have kids well they're to protect kids and there are actual federal safety standards for school buses where they need to be able to survive things like rolling over without killing everyone inside so if you see any of the accidents from these uh rvs out there they just turn to confetti out on the highway i mean people are constantly well i'm not constantly i'm not going to say that but 
I mean, you constantly see these just broken on the road and it's just insulation and plywood and they're not built very well and they're really expensive. Well, they're built to a price point. You Well, they should be built to a price point. They definitely charge a lot of money for them, but they seem to skimp out on the structural part of yeah. the build. You get nice amenities inside and if you never bump into anything, then it's great for a few years. When we were looking at RVs, one of the things that I noticed was they seemed to not age very well at all. And you could find an RV that was only about 10 years old and it would have 100,000 miles on it. It would have already had the engine rebuilt once and had a rod knocking, so it was ready to have it rebuilt a second time. Every motor in it that controlled anything would need to be replaced or had already been replaced. And it just seemed like they weren't very durable and we wanted something that we could build, we could rely on and not question if it was gonna start the next day or if it was gonna be able to make another trip from coast to coast. So the school bus was the way that we went and we liked it so much we bought a second one. So another question we get a lot is, did you have any experience with converting before? No, none. This is our second bus build. I still don't feel like I have any experience. Yeah, and nobody knows this stuff straight out of the gate. You have to learn from doing, you have to learn as much as you can from watching other people who have done it. You have to learn from their mistakes and you have to learn from your own mistakes. Go out and see people's buses. We've met people who are we're friends with now who have left us a note on our bus in a Lowe's parking lot. You know, when we became friends, they were there like, hey, we have a bus too, come check it out. You know, see other people's. Join some of the groups, find people nearby you. I mean, everybody has their own wealth of knowledge and could be totally skilled in something that you're not is willing to help and you can be totally skilled in something that they're not willing to help. It's a very big community. And the first time that we met another group, we actually had planned on, let's see how many good ideas we can steal. And we got a couple. Yeah. And so far so good. On our second bus, we did a lot of things differently than we did on our first bus yeah. because we learned from our mistakes. We learned where the pain points were and worked to address them. But overall, we don't have any real experience with building houses or even... I'm still not allowed to use power tools. Yeah, she can't use power tools. I can't climb ladders. I fall off of them. And yeah. We know our limits. And we've done pretty good so far. So another question is, did you do the whole conversion yourself? And I would say the first bus we did, 99% of it we did ourselves. Yep. I had a friend who came over to hold the ladder a few times and that was about it. The second bus we've done almost entirely ourselves also, except that we had a company come in to spray foam insulate it. And that's one of the mistakes I would learn from. If I were doing it again, I would skip the spray foam and I would do rigid foam board insulation instead. Much easier and cheaper and you get the same R value. Well, you get close to the same close R value, uh, but you get a much easier to deal with surface. Yeah. One thing that, one of the mistakes that we learned from on our first bus was kind of ignoring insulation or not putting enough attention into insulation. We left the stock ceiling in, we didn't even touch it. I think you took one panel down and was like, oh yeah, this looks good, it's, it's not moldy in there, put it back up. Bad, bad idea. You really, really want to insulate these things. It's a tin can, it gets hot. Also, it gets cold and stays cold. So if it's hot, you won't cool off until the night. It's still gonna stay really hot in the bus until about two o'clock in the morning three o'clock in the morning. When it's cold, it stays cold in here. It's normally, when it's on cold days, it's colder inside the bus than it is outside the bus. Well, it it could, stays cold in there. It can certainly feel that way. And even though our buses, both our buses we bought had dual engine driven air conditioners, you don't really want to be running the bus while you're parked. Yeah, and for it's at night when you're sleeping. You definitely don't want to run it while you're asleep. They're not quiet. And They're not fuel efficient. Well, they're fuel efficient well, given what they are. They true. get good gas mileage for a house. Yeah, that's true. But if you have a little bit of insulation, a little bit of thought put into it, you can really improve your temperature situation. So the next question, how do you make money on the road? 
And so I own my own business uh, with a partner and we do website design and create web applications. And that's something that I could do from anywhere as long as I have internet connectivity, which overall hasn't been a problem. So that is something I've been doing for almost 15 years in this business. And it finally got to the point where it could sustain what I was doing as my only job and became my only job and is able to mostly fund us as we're out and about and building our first and second bus. I uh, do whatever I can to make money, um, little odd jobs here and then to help them friends out. I also um, make some organic bath and body products like coconut oil based soaps, um, lotions for sure. My skin has changed greatly since I started using all the organic stuff, doing that, selling it. You know, friends, family, online shows, wherever you can. You know, if there's a uh, community get together or something, rent a table there, sell stuff. It's it's great. It's convenient. It's it's money. Anything you can do, anything you can find on jobs. You know, it can be done. It can. You don't have to have all the experience that he has. People do less than what we do, and they fund their builds. Yeah, and what? they fund their trips. I mean. And one thing that you need to keep in mind is when you move into a bus, after the initial build part, you have the opportunity that your costs of living could drop dramatically. Yeah. When you're not paying a mortgage, you're not paying monthly rent on an apartment, and instead you're spending your money on fuel. If you're not traveling a whole lot, if you find good places that you can stay for longer periods of time, you really put all that money right back in your pocket. And every dollar you don't spend is a dollar you don't have to make. Yep. So a lot of people ask about showers and toilets in the bus. We, when we were in our short bus, um, we had the black card membership to Planet Fitness, which is good. It's 20 bucks a month per person, and it's good at all the Planet Fitnesses, fitnesses nationwide. Um, they have, I have nothing bad to say about Planet Fitness. They have excellent showers. They're always clean. Most of them are open 24-7. Um, never in sketchy neighborhoods or anything or we never felt unsafe in any of them uh, really convenient i mean there were only a couple states where we really had to wait a couple days to take a shower because we couldn't find one but we didn't really have an issue with that um, we've stayed at a couple free campgrounds that also had showers um, definitely look into free campgrounds stay boondock stay for free don't pay to stay places and with that said, our second bus build that we're doing has a shower as one of the features. That was something that we weren't able to fit into the short bus just because of lack of space. But this one... Yeah, knowing that we have the room and ability to put a shower in, we're actually we're doing it because that's a one luxury that we want to upgrade to. And so as far as toilets go, our first bus, we had a composting toilet that was homemade. It was a bucket with a funnel and a tube coming out the front that went in for it had a funnel urine diverter and a milk jug to hold the pee. And with inside the bucket, we used um, coconut core as the medium and that was our toilet. And really only go number one, one in there. I mean, if you can avoid it in such a small space, it just it's cramped quarters. I don't want to be pooping in front of him. He doesn't want to be pooping in front of me. We're that close, not that close, honey, sorry. Um, but we had that, it worked, but I mean, public restrooms are everywhere. Use them, use them to your advantage. But this one, we built another composting toilet. Not really a composting toilet, what do you call it? A dry just, toilet? Just a dry toilet. Yeah. yeah. And it's, we use, uh, it's got, we've got a real fancy urine diverter um, and a fancy water jug again. And then we've got a bucket that we just use cat litter. We have two cats, they use the same litter that we use. So we don't have to buy anything extra like the coconut pour like we used to have to. So on our boat, we had one of the expensive composting toilets. It was a airhead and it's the second most popular next to the nature's head. They're both around a thousand dollars new. And I figured for a thousand dollar budget, I could probably design something just as good and really it did work out to be just as good 
I'm not spending a thousand dollars on a toilet. I'm sorry. It's ridiculous. That's people have them. Love them. I love you. Love your toilet. I mean, they're they're great. I have nothing bad to say about it. But personally, I'm not spending a thousand dollars on a toilet. And with our new system that we built, the cleanup is a lot easier with a nature's head airhead or like a homemade bucket type system where you have something stirring what's in what's in the bucket you can't put a liner in it so whenever you need to change it out which is at best every couple of weeks maybe a month you have a really messy job on your hands that you're not going to enjoy. And you got to find a dumpster somewhere and try to be incognito about it. Don't be one of those jerks who just goes and dumps it willy nilly. Don't be a jerk. Don't do that. So with our new system, we're able to use a liner and we just put it out every week with the normal trash pickup and it works out really well. Now, one thing that a lot of people who do homemade bucket type systems, skimp out on is a negative pressure ventilation where you actually have a fan pulling the air out of the toilet area and that is a recipe for having a really smelly toilet and it can get wet it it you'll get moisture in there you need to keep that medium whatever you have in there at a certain temperature or at a certain moisture point or else it gets soupy and hot and you don't want that yeah they can get pretty gross pretty quickly so that's yet another reason why we didn't go with that type again. So we just used a computer fan and some PVC pipe. Boom, we got negative pressure fan and it works great. There's no smell. It's weird using cat litter to poop, but it totally works and it doesn't smell and it's great and it's not a thousand dollars. Yeah. A thousand dollars, it's half the price of per bus purchase. When you think about it that way, it seems a little crazy. And of course, the other popular option is to use a flush toilet with a black tank like you would see on a Class A RV. And I would say if you have ever had to maintain one of those, you would not choose to use one of those systems again. I don't want to use a black tank. They are. Why carry around wet poop water? No. Well, that and when it fails, and it will fail. Yeah that's not a job that you're going to enjoy. Especially if it's really hot out or if it's really cold out. What else we got? So how do we power everything? Now our bus is entirely solar. We have five 100 watt solar panels on the roof and we're kind of overdriving a 30 amp solar charge controller. What this allows us to do is achieve our maximum power generation when we don't have as much light as we would need to get it with just four panels. So we have two 200 amp hour storage batteries. They're AGM style. And we have a 1000 watt power inverter for the opportunities where we do need it. And everything people, pretty much in there runs on DC power. DC powered fridge, DC powered plugs for our laptops and our phones, everything is DC powered. And that's one of the big lessons that I think a lot of people don't get right off the bat is if you have power that you're generating with solar, it's coming out as DC. Anytime you need to convert that to AC power, you lose anywhere from 15 to 50% of the power just doing the conversion. Yeah, at first we would plug our laptops into the inverter and that just sucked up our battery. So bought some DC plugs from Amazon and he worked them out together and yeah. now everything's DC. And a lot of things that you would plug into the wall, pretty much anything that has a power brick is actually a DC appliance and can be really trivially converted to run directly off of your battery system. And so you're talking about things like cell phones, you're talking about tablets, you're talking about your laptop and Kindle. Yeah, anything that plugs into a USB port, obviously, or like I said, anything that uses a power, uh, like a wall wart or a power brick like you find on a laptop, that's something that you have the opportunity to power directly from DC power. You might need to do voltage conversion, which is a lot more efficient than doing an inversion. We have a DC powered fridge that powers on every, too often I think, but like maybe every 
15 minutes. It just powers on for a minute or so. It keeps everything nice and cold. Yeah, and all of our lights are energy efficient LEDs. And we've got DC powered fans. And we have a few things that we run from AC power, but most of the time the power inverter is turned off. Yeah. And even just having the power inverter on draws something like six tenths of an amp, which is a lot more power than you want to spend on nothing. Really pay attention to what your power usage is and what you have stored. Really pay attention to that because, I mean, if you're solar, purely solar like us, that's your lifeline. You don't want to be out. You don't want to run out. We never wanted for power because we just constantly watched and watched our usage. I mean, if you're going in Starbucks to go use their um, internet and get some coffee, hang out there, get some work done, plug in Starbucks, plug in at McDonald's. Every, all the, every, there's so many places that have free Wi-Fi now, independent uh, coffee shops. Go hang out there for a while, patronize local businesses, use their Wi-Fi, plug, plug your stuff in there. I bring my Kindle in and charge it in there. I mean, I wouldn't bring your toothbrush and charge it in there, but you know, you know, just try using what's available to you. I mean, stuff's out there. Yeah, and another thing that we've done on this bus is I've upgraded the alternator to a uh, 200 amp high output, low RPM alternator. So if we need a bit of extra juice, we've had too many cloudy days in a row or what have you, I can run the bus for a little while with the battery bank connected to the start batteries and put quite a bit of juice right back in in a short amount of time. What so, else we got? Uh, so the last thing on this list is what's the biggest piece of advice you'd give to a couple that's just starting out? Just do it. Don't hesitate. Just do it. I wish we would have done this years ago. We love it so much and we've met so many amazing people and made so many amazing lifelong friends. Um, this is a beautiful country. There's so much to see out there. We did a whole loop in a year and we barely saw most of the stuff that we want to see. There's so much out there and just do it. Don't let family and friends who think, oh, you're crazy. You can't do that. You can't just sleep in a car. You can't. There's so many workarounds for everything. Like say your mail and stuff, get a mailbox, get a, a, a PO box or a USPS or UPS box like we have. They'll mail it to another UPS store that's near you. You can get your mail still. There's so many options out there. Don't be afraid. Don't let anything hold you back. Just do it. Yeah, and we find even getting packages from Amazon is easy enough. Yeah. There's a lot of places where they have lockers, and if you're on the road somewhere, you can always put a message out on one of the schoolie groups or a forum and see if anybody's in the area that'll let you get some packages, packages delivered there. We've and met people that way, too. Yeah, we've it's made great. great friends that way, too. And, yeah, overall, nobody's going to do it for you. If you think this is a lifestyle that you would enjoy, you should just jump in. Just do it. And I think that is all the questions on my list. So let us know in the comments if you have any more questions. I'm sure we'll want to do more videos like this. Um, we haven't even begun to show you the inside of the bus. It's not done yet, but we will show you once it's done and once more projects get done in it. Um, let us know in the comments any questions that you have. Um, don't be afraid to ask us anything. We're pretty open. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Like and subscribe. Thank you.